Hello and welcome to my channel. So this week was supposed to be all holly and jolly for me. Um, if you've been following along with my Lazy Girl Vlogmas series, then you know that I've been trying to give kind of an inside look into what it's like celebrating the holidays in my life this year. If you can't tell from my shirt, I am still, I'm, I'm actually in the middle of shooting a vlog right now. Today is the day that I'm doing my Christmas card with my dog and some other things as well. So I wanted to be dressed up festively. This sweater is so hot. I also wanna say for those of you who have been watching my vlogs, thank you so much. Um, as creators, like a big thing that we sort of think about a lot is what happens if I shift my content, what will happen? You can see from my numbers, um, I have lost some subscribers since I started posting vlogs, which is funny to me because I can say some of the most like disappointing and polarizing things and gain followers. But the second I'm like, here's how I make my coffee, people leave. That's the, which is, which is their right, that's fine. But I really do appreciate, just from my my standpoint as a creator, number one, how many people are really enjoying the content that are watching and you know, not like, oh my God, this is terrible, I'm leaving. And number two, I don't know if, if you're if you if you don't normally watch my vlogs, you don't care for that kind of content, I would just say go go take a look at the comment section of those vlogs. It is like a Christmas gift to me every day to read that, to see how much joy it's bringing people. That is not something as a creator that I'm always used to. And yet, when I first started YouTube, that is definitely something that a lot of people in my life expected from me because they knew me as somebody who has that ability to like create the good vibes and the warmth and the, the fun and the feelings of love and joy and levity. And you know, I when I started talking initially, I wanted to get in here and do videos like I'm about to do today but I still have that other skill and that's definitely something that I wanna lean into more. So if you've been watching and you've enjoyed it, thank you so much. Like I said, I'm in the middle of doing one right now, which is why I'm sweating in this uh, sweater uh, here underneath these lights. Um, but that is not what I am talking about in this video. That's not the main point of this video. This video is in response to an interview that was held I don't know if it was Wednesday or Thursday, but it was held on a podcast called The Pivot. And The Pivot is hosted by former NFL players. And I think the last time people talked about this podcast outside of the podcast normal audience was about a year and a half ago when Channing some, I don't, I don't watch sports y'all, I don't know. But uh, one of the hosts of the podcast said that Russell Wilson was a square and indicated that he, you know, didn't like him, didn't respect him for the ways that he has behaved as a husband and a father, compared him, I believe, to future and said, you know, it was a bunch of toxic masculinity. It, it wasn't great. And I did a video on it at the time. And I think that was the last time that like any soundbite or anything from that podcast hit audiences outside of that podcast normal demographic. So when I started to see clips circulating on social media regarding Simone Biles and her husband, Jonathan Owens, and what he said about her on this podcast, I was like, this is, this is not gonna be good. Because normally when clips from that podcast circulate outside of that podcast's normal demographic, it's not good. It's something that has made people angry, particularly, usually, women. So what was said? Um, in, a, in a world where there were no uh, regulations um, and where I had time to work a little bit harder to get the clip for you, I would play it. But instead, I'm just going to repeat verbatim what was said and I will link the podcast below. And if you didn't have, if you haven't seen it yet, or if you don't feel like going and searching on TikTok for the clips that people have grabbed and placed on there, then um, you can just go and click and go right to their page and watch it. But Jonathan Owens was asked about how he and Simone Biles got together. And according to him, she found him on the dating app Raya, or they found each other. He saw her, he swiped on her, they matched. And when they matched, she went over to his Instagram account, she followed him, she sent him a DM. He saw that she followed him and sent him a DM. And he saw that she had a lot of followers and he said, okay, what's going on with this? So they start talking, she goes, drives 45 minutes to go and see him. Um, if you've ever been in Houston, you know, and I think Simone talked about living in Spring or Humble or somewhere out there. Houston is so vast and so spread out 
that, yeah, if you meet somebody and say you're living in downtown or midtown or Memorial or the Heights or whatever, and that person lives out in Spring or Humble, it's about a 30, 45 minute drive. And if you live in like Webster, Clear Lake, Dickinson, um, Friendswood, like any of those areas, and that person lives on the north side of Houston, yeah, you're, you're looking at an hour drive. So when I heard that, I wasn't like, oh my God, she, you know, because I'm from the area and I know, but it still didn't, it, it didn't hit people the right way. Anyway, so she drives out to go see him, they hang out and according to him, the rest is history. So of course this prompted the podcast host to poke a little further and they were like, well, what, you know, what, were you impressed because she was Simone Biles? And then this man admitted to not knowing who she was. Simone Biles. He didn't know who Simone Biles was. Now, I know I just said I don't really follow football. I know I just said I'm not, like, I'm not a sports fan. I'm not. Do not talk. I don't. But I know who Steph Curry is. I know who Travis Kelsey is. I know who Richard Sherman is. I know who, you know what I'm saying? Like if they are superstars outside of their realm, if they've done something amazing, especially if they've crossed over into commercials, um, if they're on talk shows, if they're just being in this world, <laughs> I know who they are. And then I think Simone Biles in general, like we don't have to do too much on her, but the most decorated, I mean, there's, there's just, you, you. so he said he didn't know who she was. And then he went on to say that he was fighting her when she was coming on to him and saying, you know, I like you or whatever, that she was really the pursuer in the early days and that he didn't want to be committed. And he, you know, but eventually things happened and he committed to her and now they're married. And then the podcast hosts ask him, they say, so would you then say if somebody said that you didn't really want Simone for real, would that be an accurate description of y'all's romance and he says no no um I, I wouldn't say all that so then someone says it's like you were the prize and he said well I always think that men are the prize or the catch or something like that well as you can guess um this was that that was the clip that was the thing that led a lot of people to start talking about this interview. And it's really upsetting because Simone was there and she was kind of co-signing the story. And I only say it's upsetting because her being there and co-signing it only dug, dug them both kind of more of a grave. And when I say a grave, I, 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 it, it's a metaphor, right? And it's a metaphor for the idea, the de-escalation of the good image that the public might have in you that helps them buy into what you claim to stand for. That's what I mean. Um, I wanna say this, as a black woman who has done so much, Simone Biles also being a young woman who is married does nothing but add more to her, the, the public's idea of how wonderful she is. It's no secret, statistically speaking, that marriage has evaded a certain demographic for a long time or, I will say that it's it, it it would seem it's less likely to happen at a younger age to a certain demographic, and that demographic is black women. It's no secret that a lot of content online is kind of pushed forward and spurned by this sort of collective sense of anger and disappointment at the way traditional relationships have worked out for black women. Um, just as a as an example from here on my page, I know that I could put out a video like like this one that'll get more views in no time than a video that I make about me doing going about my daily business, making breakfast, doing whatever, because that collective sense of rage and disappointment and anger at how a certain type of fairy tale love story continues to evade a certain demographic, that collective rage is so strong and so unifying. And when people find something that feeds into that rage, they're gonna eat it up. And so when I say he dug them more of a grave, <laughs> we, 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 we didn't need to, we, they, they don't need that kind of press. I also wanna say that when I heard him describe their love story that way, and this is no, this is no hate on Simone, this is no like, I'm not trying to put her down in any way, I said to myself, okay, that makes sense. And here's why, here's why. I believe, and you guys can tell me in the comments whether or not you agree, but 
I believe that sometimes you can tell, first of all, I, I, I think that there tends to be a type when it comes to the type of woman that NFL players and professional athletes date and put on the front row and march around in front of their friends. Like there's, there's like a type. And normally it's ethnically ambiguous, racially ambiguous, lots of ambiguousness. And it's pretty consistent throughout all sports, especially when you talk about black men in sports. And so when I saw Jonathan and Simone together, I was surprised. But also I said, you know, she may have not been the type of person that he normally would have dated, but her Olympian status, her social status gave her a leg up that made him, that made her more attractive to him. And I know that sounds terrible. I know that that's, and I'm not trying to put down their love or like their real love story, but he literally said, I would not have actually messaged her. I would not have gone after her. She went after me and then I saw everything that she is and I was impressed by that. I do think that a lot of times with, I'm trying not to, I think that a lot of times when it comes to initial attraction uh, and who men decide to pursue and who they don't, I do think that they have kind of a hierarchy. And if you don't meet certain physical standards, then you have to also have a lot of social standards going for you. And I think that when he describes how he felt about people reacting to her the way that they did, I think that that probably helped any kind of trepidation that he would have had for jumping all the way in. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, he never would have wanted to be with her at all. Like her personality wasn't of it. It's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is when I heard how their love story actually played out, I was not surprised that she was the pursuer because men in his position, professional athlete, decent looking, normally have their pick of the litter when it comes to women. And traditionally speaking, they pick a certain type of woman. And I also think sometimes there's societal pressure to pick that type of woman. If you go and it's a, what do they call them, wags? It's a wives and girlfriends event and you look around, a lot of times the women look kind of the same from what I see on social media. Clearly I've never been in that kind of event. But from what I see, a lot of times they kind of look the same. So when I saw, or when he said, what he said about their love story, I was like, it makes sense to me that she pursued him. It also makes sense to me because he seems like he's kind of a space cadet. Like he's sort of just, 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 just lost in the sauce, just floating in space. Again, how do you not know who Simone Biles is? How do you not know? I think a person like that would probably be somebody who wouldn't go after things unless you put it right in front of him, unless you told him, like he is the definition of, you wouldn't know a good thing unless it slapped you in the face. And I think Simone literally had to slap him in the face and be like, look dummy, I'm amazing, do, do, do what you need to do. So there were a couple things that jumped out at me about what he said that also solidified for me a lot of opinions that I've had about their union or about like how it happened and, and et cetera, et cetera, for a while. And I was just, I was really sad when I heard him speak about her that way, not only for how it will affect the people that look up to her, because again, there's a collective disappointment when it comes to the romantic potential of the lives of black women. There are too many statistics, too many sad, bad stories that people have seen play out over and over again over the years. And part of them is being in a situation where you are undervalued. There are so many people that know that firsthand. There are so many people that, you know, whether it's happened to them or it's happened to a, a family member, someone that they love, they know what it is to be around a man who is with you just because, mm, well, you know, you seem, you seem all right. And then eventually, he might run into something that he really wants and you get to see what it looks like when he really is pursuing something and he's really excited. And people, people, people have seen this kind of story play out before. And so when I was listening to him describe it, I was just like, this is not what I think any of us wanted for Simone. And this is not what a lot of people want from people that they look up to. And unfortunately for black women, when you are looked up to and when you're thought of being a leader or somebody in the spotlight, not only is your hair something people will go after, we've seen people talk about Simone's hair, we know how they talked about Gabby Douglas's hair, but they'll talk about your makeup, they will talk about your, your, uh, your, your body, and they'll talk about your romantic status. 
And I think he didn't do her any, any favors in the eyes of people that look up to her by admitting she pursued me. I wasn't really, I didn't even know who she was. And it took me a while to decide that I wanted to go along with it. Like she, like he did her no favors. I do want to give a shout out though to the men on the podcast because they were, I'm going to learn their names, I swear. And I'm going to put the guy's name up here. I, I don't, <laughs> I'm not the audience, okay? I only saw it because this clip pissed people off. But this guy, I loved his face when he was uh, listening to John Jeremy, when he was listening to him talk. I loved how he was like, are you serious? Are you, are you real? You're talking to Simone Biles. Are you serious? There was a point where, uh, I'm just gonna call him Owens because right now I can't decide if it's Jeremy or Jonathan. I, I can't decide. But there was a point when he said, you know, I asked her, well, who's your competition? And the guy, the guy, he goes, no one. No, I'll answer that for you. No one is her competition. Like, I love the fact that the men that were listening to him talk about this national treasure were all like, I can't believe she lets you get away with Like, I can't believe you're talking about our Simone Biles like this. And I'll tell you what I've recognized about men. And clearly I, I don't know a lot about them, but I will tell you something that I have learned. When, we, we all know that they don't really, they have a, they have a uh, history of not respecting women that they're not attracted to, right? But there are other ways that you will find yourself in relation or around men that do respect you. And one of those ways, 99.99% .99 of the time is just talent. Whether it's your intelligence, whether it is your ability to uh, excel in whatever career you have, and especially athletic ability. He was talking to a room full of athletes about an incredibly decorated athlete, and it seemed like he did not really understand her value at all. And so I loved that the men in that room were like, not too much on Simone. Do you even know who you're talking about? Do you know what you're talking about? And it was very clear that he didn't, or at least he didn't when he first met her. And I still don't know if he gets it. I, I don't know, but um, I can tell you this, that is not the way to tell the story of, to tell your love story. The unfortunate truth about living your life in front of other people is that everybody can't know all your truths. And that particular story, knowing what the social climate is like and knowing what, how much weight people put on the love lives of black women, um, wh whether that's fair or not, I will say that because honestly, you know, everybody's gonna find, you know, I, if I look at this another way, I would definitely say that Simone probably lucked out in this situation. And here's why, here's why. Everybody knew who she was. So it's probably really hard for her to date. It's hard to date in general. Also, she had just been through, or she's been through a lot in her life. And I personally believe that things should balance out in some areas. Like if you aren't really great at, if you don't have a really great career, like if it's hard for you to climb the public ladder or the, the corporate ladder, I feel like your home life should be easy. Like if it's really hard, if it's, if you're not the job, career, ambitious person, then you should be the person that's surrounded by friends and family always. And so you never really have to want for money or resources because you, you're always kind of taken care of. If you're not the person that has a lot of natural friends and family, you don't come from like a big family, you do whatever, then your, your career should be something that balances out for you. If you didn't have a great childhood or maybe you struggled with poverty or things in your home that you weren't really comfortable with, then as an adult, I feel like you should know what it's like to have money in your pocket and to build the kind of home that you want. And so when I look at the story of Owens and Simone, you know, part of it, I'm like, ooh, why, why did he tell it like that? But the other part, I'm like, well, I'm, I'm kind of happy for her that she saw this man. He was a space cadet floating in space. She said, that's who I want. She went after him. He was able to see what he needed to see in her to solidify him wanting to commit because as a young man, a young athlete, he's got options and you know, so does she. But I do know if you, when you see somebody and you want them first, there is a negotiation that they might have to do. And I know with men, like I said, if it's not, if they don't wanna go after you because of just how you look, sometimes it's other things that make them say, oh, okay, well, this would be a good partner for me. I also wanna point out that he is a Leo man. And so, you know, what did we expect? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I saw this and I wanted to comment on it. The last thing I will say is there was one guy in the room. They're all just guys in the room to me because I, I don't know who these people are, but I don't, I, I you know. Um, but one of them said, so you and Simone kind of flipped the script. 
because she went after you. She shot her shot first. And I don't know why men still think that this is so earth shattering that women shoot their shot. I think it's extremely close minded. And I'm not saying this about him. I think he was, I think all of them were just trying to clean up because they knew that he was just digging himself into the ground by <laughs> describing their love story like this. So they were just trying to clean it up and move on. But the fact that it's even still a conversation, um, whether or not women shoot their shot or what that looks like or if that'll be successful, I think that that's a ridiculous thing. And I would like for men to stop pretending like it's something that they actually want when it's, when it's not. We all know that men are designed to be the hunters. And so if a woman is coming after a man, then he, that's usually because he has not seen what he needs to see to go after her first. And the behavior, the behavior in the relationship, in the courtship, whatever it is, when a woman goes after a man first is so disappointingly different than when it's the other way. And we've seen this play out over and over again. And I had a video about this up on my channel, but I, I did take it down. But I said, as a woman, you can make the first move, definitely. But you need to know that you might not be successful. He's not gonna just accept it just because you're a woman. And if he didn't go after you first, there's probably a reason. And most likely you don't know, you don't wanna find out what that reason is. So while Simone was, lucky in this situation. Like he, he was like, yeah, I'm for it. There's, <laughs> there needs to be a support group for women out there who have made the first move because society's like, yes, do it, do it. And it has blown up in their faces spectacularly. I do not think that that is the way that things are supposed to work. And um, I think that we need to stop pretending that that's a solution to things. But I will say that in Simone's case, doing what she did as described by her husband, you know, matching with a guy on a dating site saying, hey, I really actually want to talk to him. I'll just hit him up in his DMs and see what happens. It's not really making the first move per se. That's just, it, when you when you online date, there's so many profiles that you can go through. There's so, you know, it's, it's very easy for things to just get pushed to the wayside and for people not to take it seriously. And so I think that all she was doing was, you know, elevating it. Let, let's, let's go to the top. I want you to see my file or whatever. And then it was up to him. Let's play ball. Like, what do you want to do? So I don't necessarily think she was making the first move all the way there. I think she was just trying to better her chances of them actually making a good match because online dating can get really superficial and ridiculous very quickly. Um, but I just wanted to talk about that thinking for a little bit. It's not out of the ordinary for women to make, to make their first move. It just, it doesn't work out a lot of the times because that's not how women and men are designed. And I think we need to be honest about that. All right, I am gonna go back to making my holly jolly content. I don't even really know what I said in this video. I just wanted to comment on the situation. Did you see the clip? What did you think? Um, oh, oh, before I go, this concept of people being the prize. <sighs> so that is something that a lot of people caught on to and they were disappointed by the fact that they asked him, are you the prize? And he said, yes, basically. Um, and then he said, I always think men are the prize. And I'm not making that face because I don't think, yeah, like speak your mind, whatever, but why would you say some, why would you say that? Why? I think we, we all might have opinions. We all might have things we think, but time and place, time and place. And it's never the time and place to admit to something like that. But again, like I said, he is a Leo man, so I'm not surprised. But I do want to talk about that for a second because he made a point or someone made a point about this and they said, yes, men are the prize. Think about all the things women do to get a man. Of course, men are the prize, right? And I was like, mm, mm, mm. here's what I think. I think, like I said before, um, men are designed to be the hunters and or men, men are designed to go after what they want, right? A lot of people were quoting in response to this, the Bible says, he who findeth a wife finds a good thing. So him, he's got to find it, right? Um, I think that, you know, yes, it's on, it's, that's definitely how it's set up. Men are looking, men are, because women are the prize, men, you know, went, right. I definitely think that there is something to women being this, uh, you know, a wife, a partner being this sacred thing that a man is set up to want 
And a lot of them spend a lot of their lives trying to go after. Maybe if it's not even for her to be a wife, maybe just a companion, maybe something else. Um, so I do think that there's some truth to that. But I also want to say that the Bible also talks about being a Proverbs 31 woman. It, it gives so many rules and regulations on how to become the type of woman that a man would think is the prize. And in general, society does put so much pressure on women and then also assign so much blame to women when they haven't been chosen as the prize, um, it would, I, I do understand his thinking there. However, I don't necessarily believe that women or men are the prize. I think it's, and I've said this before, I think it's the person. Whomever you want, when you set your eyes on them, they then become your prize. Whether that is the woman who sets her eyes on a man, that's the man that sets his eyes on a woman. I also believe that there are natural and innate roles that have to be played out for the relationship to run smoothly. However, when it comes to who is the one that is going to be the most valuable person in the relationship, I really think that both people can hold that value just in different ways. And I think this concept, I, I don't even think he should have been asked that question. He was asked that question because obviously the way he framed their story was she went after him. But clearly when we look at the situation, she put his, she probably kept him in the league. I think he's gotten kicked off of two teams. I don't know, but she put his name on the map. We probably wouldn't even know who he was if it wasn't for her. She is clearly the more decorated and more high profile individual. And that's just the superficial things, right? We don't even know um, what their connection is like outside of what we can see. And then if we go further in time, you know, her being a wife, mother, just a general companion to him, um, way out measures anything that she would have seen and swiped on on a dating app. So I think the question itself probably shouldn't even be asked anymore. I believe that we should give, we should give the proper weight to the fact that women and men do a lot to secure each other. And there are roles and expectations that both parties carry out. And there are different valuable things that both parties can bring to the situation. I mean, honestly, there's so much content out there about how to get a rich man, how to get a, go to a hotel and sit by yourself and read a book so you can be mysterious and feminine to get the right man to get the right. There's so much content out there about that that I can actually see. I can see where he's coming from, but I think that that thinking is. Um, I think that, that thinking is. It's false and it isn't fair. Whenever you get into a healthy partnership, you both are the prize, in my opinion, and you're gonna perform your roles and your expectations in different ways, but um, the desire to have each other and the value that you place on each other um, is, is, should, should be the same. You should both look at and highly value the other person, um, and that's how I think. Okay, now I'm really ending this and wrapping this up. I uh, wanna know what y'all think if you saw the clip. And now it's back to the holly jolly vibes of Vlogmas. As always, thank you for watching.